Okay, in this chapter we're just going to cover basic configuration of Media Mailer. Uh, so we're treating this as a first run of the software, so if you've never used it before this is probably a good place to start. And this is configuration of Media Mailer version 2. Uh, we're about to log in, so what you will need is your login details to hand. If you don't have those, then you can use this password reminder service which is located on the right hand side. And that will send your username and a new password to your registered email address. If you're not actually uh, set up as an admin in the system, then you need to speak to your IT department to get you added. So we're going to log into the system. And here we are, and this is the home page. So the area we're going to be looking at is account controls, and that can be found by clicking this button just here along the top nav bar. Okay, within the account control system, we've got four options. The one we're going to look at is My Configuration. Now, this is to help you set up Media Mailer uh, so that you can send mail through your mail gateway and specify your from name and your from email address and set up unique subscribe and unsubscribe redirection URLs. If you're wondering what those are, well, I'll explain shortly. So, let's click on My Configuration and get started. Now, on this screen, you need to complete this first form before you send out any emails because otherwise any from names or from email addresses will appear blank. So what we're going to do for the purpose of this is we're going to say our company organizational name is Media Mailer. Now obviously for the purpose of your own installation you need to put in your own name. Again we're going to put in Media Mailer as our message from name and our message from email address we're going to use no reply at mediamailer.com. Now you may want to put it to a personal email address such as yourself or you may want to use what we do is we use no reply email addresses because um, remember bounced emails will come back to the address that it's sent from so if you don't want to receive tons of bounces if you're using large lists it's, it's advised to use a no reply address. Now the, the last two fields unsubscribe URL and subscribe URL now these are basically redirects and what does that mean? Well if you place an unsubscribe link on your emails, which effectively you have to do to comply with spam regulations, when someone clicks that link, they need to sort of be redirected somewhere to confirm that they've been removed. Now, if you leave that blank, they will be redirected to a very blank default page that's been built into the mailer system, but what you can do is redirect them to your own page on your website, which you can design and make it look a lot nicer. So if we, if we say, for instance, your website address may have been called HTTP colon colon slash slash www dot mywebsite dot com and then unsubscribe dot html. Then what would happen is when someone unsubscribes, the system will redirect them to that URL. Now, likewise, you can do the same with subscribe URLs. So if you've added a form on your website, which then puts people's email addresses into the database for Mailer, the redirect automatically sends them to the confirmation page that you you have uh, set up here. So it's a pretty useful little feature and it just makes everything look a lot more professional. Now scrolling down a little further we've got mail server configuration. Now there's two, two different mail servers um, that you can use. You can use Mailer's inbuilt SMTP server which is slightly slower but a lot easier to configure because you don't need to do anything. Or you can use your own local SMTP server on your own web server that you've actually hosted the software on. Now if you're unfamiliar with web technologies or server environments then you're advised not to change anything um, and I'm not going to go through any details here because uh, this this really this configuration should be done by your web IT professionals uh, the performance configuration should always be left at 15 so uh, please do not change that but if it has been changed to a different number make sure you change it back to 15 and um, so when we're completed and finished we'll click save changes and that is the end of your configuration